what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again with another Aya Neo 2 video and today we're going to be testing out some eGPU performance on this handheld gaming device. If you're not familiar with the Aya Neo 2 go ahead and check out my first video we did kind of a first look went over all of the features all of the specs tested out some PC gaming and some emulation I will have my full review video coming up soon and if you're interested in learning more I will leave a link to the website and the Indiegogo in the description but I'll give you a quick rundown here. For the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 7 6800U, 8 cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.7 GHz. It's got a 50 watt hour battery, a 7 inch 1200p bezel-less IPS display that looks really good. I mean, I don't know how it's coming across on video, but if you see this thing in person, it definitely looks like an OLED display. And since we have that Ryzen 7 6800U APU, we've got the brand new RDNA 2 Radeon 680M iGPU built in here. And by itself, yeah, this thing can definitely game. So while you're on the go, you can have a great time with it. But when you get home and you need a little extra GPU power, you can actually use an eGPU dock on this because we've got USB 4, which will support Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 docks. I know we've got an AMD platform here, but yeah, it's totally supported and it works out really well. And recently I ran a poll on my YouTube community page. I had five GPUs to choose from. I asked my viewers which ones they wanted to see running with the Ioneo 2. And as you can see, the RTX 3060 came out ahead, but the RX 6900 XT didn't fall far behind. So we'll definitely be testing both of those out, but I've got two other cards that I want to throw into the mix. So obviously we can't just plug this GPU directly into the handheld itself. We will need some type of Thunderbolt dock. So for this, I'm going to be using my trusty Sonnet eGPU dock. I bought this a few years ago. It's definitely served me well. I've done some modifications to it, uh, like uh, cut the back out so we can actually add a three slot card. The front also now folds down because I've drilled out the rivet so we can fit longer cards in here. And I added a 750 watt ATX power supply with four 8 pin connectors, just in case we need it for those bigger, more power hungry cards. And keep in mind, this is a Thunderbolt 3 dock, but when it comes to USB 4 or even Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabytes per second. Now there are some other differences, so we might see better performance with a Thunderbolt 4 or a USB 4 dock in the future. But at the time of making this video, I personally haven't seen any Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 docks on the market yet. So getting everything connected is quite simple. We've got the eGPU dock here. I've got that RTX 3060. All of the video is going to be fed out of the HDMI on the 3060 to the monitor. The Neo 2 has two USB 4.0 ports. We've got one on the bottom, one on the top. I'm going to be using the top one because I've got this plugged into a dock so we have some extra USBs for a mouse and keyboard and everything like that. And I've tested the Neo 2 right out of the box. It just worked with an eGPU. So we'll go ahead and plug into that top USB 4 port. Make sure this is powered on. Power supply in the eGPU dock is spinning. I'm going to give it a second. I should have had it powered on when I plugged it in, but it will detect it. And I've already installed my NVIDIA drivers. If you're just going to be using an AMD card, the Radeon drivers we're using for the iGPU will work. But I'll show you that we can control this through Afterburner. And right now we're feeding all of our video through that RTX 3060. So yeah, through Afterburner, we can do some overclocking on the external GPU, but I'm going to leave it at the stock clocks. We're also going to leave that stock fan curve going. And real quick, I'll show you, we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U, 8 cores, 16 threads. This Neo 2 happens to have 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz, and we still have access to the internal GPU, which is the 680M. But for everything we're going to be testing in this video, we'll be using the external RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And of course, after we test with this, we're going to swap over to the RX 6900 XT. And first up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high settings, and I mean, it's working pretty well here. I do have a few dips every once in a while, and that's really due to the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 3 to USB 4. And obviously, with that lower bandwidth, we are losing out on some performance from this 3060. Because in my main rig, with a more powerful CPU and this 3060 connected over a proper PCIe X16 slot, I can average around 92 FPS with these same settings. And here, we're averaging about 72 FPS. But when it comes down to it, we've got a big jump in GPU performance over the built-in iGPU. 
God of War, and I've actually had really good luck with external GPUs and this game here, be it over Thunderbolt 3, USB 4, or even over an M.2 slot. This is one of those games that does work quite well with an eGPU. 1440p, high, with DLSS set to performance. Now, this game on the 3060 is more akin to running at 1080p, maybe high ultra mix, but you can get 1440p out of it with DLSS implemented, and it's really not bad. I mean, it still looks great and plays just fine on this setup. I also wanted to test the new Modern Warfare 2, so I just went with the built-in benchmark, and going into this game and ask you if you want to kind of pre-configure it, I just chose yes, but we are at 1440p here. And on this setup with the external RTX 3060, we got an average of 77 FPS with the benchmark. I've never really played the Modern Warfare games in the past. You know, I went through the campaign, I believe, on a couple of them, but I did start the first level in the campaign on this setup like it is right now, and this game looks absolutely beautiful, so this is something I definitely want to play through. So before I show off the performance of the RX 6900, I did want to show off some benchmarks, and what I did here was run the INEO 2 on the stock iGPU, then we ran it with the 3060, and then the RX 6900. And as you can see, I mean, it's scaling up quite nicely. Next up, we've got Firestrike on the built-in iGPU, 6,967, 17,784 with that RTX 3060, and over 20,000 with the 6900 XT. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. So obviously, a higher tier GPU is going to equal a higher score, but these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to see how the RX 6900 really performs. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077, and you know, since we're using a higher end card, I figured we could take this up to 4K, and that 4K high settings, not bad, but you know, on my main rig, I get an average of around 102 FPS with these same settings. So there is a significant drop in performance given that we're connected over USB 4, but I mean, this is totally playable in my opinion, and I would go ahead and just turn VSync on and have a great time with this game. Next up, we've got the Modern Warfare 2 built-in benchmark, and I'm using the same exact settings that we did with the RTX 3060. Now I'm sure we could take the resolution up on the RX 6900 with this whole setup, but on the 3060, we got an average of 77 FPS. With the RX 6900 XT, we got an average of 144 FPS. And if this was a normal PC, and we were connecting both of these cards over a real PCIe X16 slot, then, you know, we could definitely calculate how much more performance we're going to get out of the RX 6900. But since this isn't a normal setup, and we're connected over USB 4, you will run into some anomalies, like uh, here with God of War. So I tried to go down to even 1080p with this low settings and I was still only getting around 38 FPS out of this game. I tried reinstalling drivers, restarting the system, different settings, and this is the kind of performance I was getting. It's just not utilizing the full GPU with this game here for some odd reason. Now before we move on to the final card, I did want to show one more off. This was just a quick test, definitely overkill, but this is something I've actually been wanting to test over Thunderbolt for a little while now. We've got the RTX 4090, God of War 4K Ultra. We can get an average of around 100 FPS out of it. I did a bit more testing with AMD cards and that God of War performance we saw with the RX 6900 XT. And yeah, no matter what setting I used with that card, I was just getting bad performance in God of War. So I swapped out for another AMD card, actually two AMD cards. I went with the 6750 XT and the 5700 XT, hoping, you know, going back a generation it would help out. But I was getting the exact same performance in God of War on all three of those AMD cards. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my external GPUs, be it connected over M.2, Thunderbolt 3, or even now USB 4. I've done a lot of testing with mini PCs, handhelds, and even bigger PCs in general. I've come to find out that the NVIDIA cards from the 10 series up to the 3000 series do perform better connected externally, whether you're using Thunderbolt, USB 4, or even M.2. I wish we were getting better performance out of these AMD cards connected externally to these devices, but that's just not the case. Now the last card I wanted to take a look at is another overkill card, but this is definitely the best performing card that I've tested over Thunderbolt, USB 4, or even an M.2 slot. And this is the RTX 3080 Ti. 
basically, with these higher end cards, they kind of run in limp mode, given the bandwidth limit that we have with the connection. But since we've got so much power with that RTX 3080 Ti, it can kind of overcome it. What I'm playing right now is the new Modern Warfare 2. We're at 4K Ultra with no DLSS on, and uh, I'm getting around 90 FPS out of this game. It looks absolutely amazing and plays just fine on the Ioneo 2 connected to this external dock with the RTX 3080 Ti. But I completely understand that it's overkill and you know a lot of people aren't playing at 4K or even 1440p. A lot of people only have a 1080p monitor and in that case I'd say your best bet would be something like a GTX 1660 Super or even the 3060. You can go with the 3060 Ti if you want to but you know 1080p and even 1440 running over USB 4 definitely ups the GPU performance on these devices and yeah I mean if you want to go dock mode with it you could save some money by buying a used GTX 1660 Super and one of these used Sonnet docks. But as you saw in this video, connecting an external GPU to the Ioneo 2 over USB 4 does work out and it can significantly up the performance on this device in dock mode. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you want to learn more about the Ioneo 2 or check out my first look video, links for those are in the description. And definitely keep an eye on the channel because I've got a full emulation showcase video coming up. I've got a lot to test and this thing is an awesome performer when it comes to emulation. It'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on if you're into videos like this. But like always, thanks for watching.